You know what I want to do? I want to start my own Woo channel. But I just don't think I have the talent to make that kind of content. I'll have to find someone who does. First, I'll need an intro with weirdly dramatic music. That's great! But we need to make sure that the quality of the actual content is not contiguous with that intro. Fantastic! Staticky audio, blurry video, slack-jawed expression, it's brilliant! You're hired as the Society for Theses usually practically immediately debunked as our chief video producer. What subject are you going to make a video about for us today? On Hollow Earth Theory. Perfect! Welcome to Stupid! Admiral Byrd is the most famous person that comes to mind. I'll have to take your word for it. The only famous person I know of is, um, no one actually. I really don't get out much. Because he supposedly went through one of the poles and went into the interior of the earth and met some people and came back and told his story. Oh right, he's famous for hollow earth theory and being apparently the first person to um, visit. That's kind of like being the first person to visit Middle Earth. No, not the middle of the earth. You know, the one with the hobbits and magic and elves and shiz. Not the made up complete nonsense one. I mean, I guess they're both complete nonsense, but one of them is actually well thought out and there ain't no hollow earth Silmarillion. I'll put it that way. Damn it, there I go, giving away my opinion early. And then supposedly the story got suppressed. Yeah, well, obviously, that's how you heard of it. Damn it, the powers that be, they're always so bad at hiding things. Next, you people will find out about the giant tortoise that lives in the centre of Manhattan. It's just there, out in the open, but for some reason, no one has even noticed him. God, the amount of tourists he eats is impressive. Starting to encroach on my record. But what can we find out about Hollow Earth? Is it going to be that the Earth isn't hollow and that the very notion is patently ridiculous? And also, we know the basic makeup of the Earth because we have done tests and shiz and they all came back, no, it's not hollow. I mean, literally, in capital letters, which is weird, because in any other subject, your results would be like numbers and stuff, but no, nope, every time you do a test, it comes back, no, it's not hollow. And occasionally, there's no one here, stop asking, go away. It's very weird, but conclusive. What can we find out about subterranean realms that are within the Earth that we know would be true? Are you trying to ask what you would need to prove it? I don't know, man. Evidence? But that sounds hard, so I reckon what you could do is just believe it, and if anyone points out why it's wrong and shows you how things really are, you ignore them and claim a conspiracy. It works for every other single bad idea pretty much ever. Watch. Did you take the garbage out? Of course I did, but it's still there. God damn those garbage elves and their conspiracy to make it look like I didn't take out the trash. You win! And what I've done is I've searched through the scriptures to find some proof. The scriptures? Ah, well, I'm convinced. I mean, it's not like that's even more intellectually lazy than, say, just making stuff up. After all, making stuff up at least requires some creativity, but the scriptures, well, they can say just about anything you want, because most of it's allegory anyway, written by people just trying to explain a world that, at least at the time they were alive, they could never hope to understand, and so would make up things just to try and wrap their head around it. Of hollow earth or not, so I'll present these scriptures to you, and you can decide. I don't want to come off as closed-minded or anything, but you don't even have to present them for me for me to decide that they probably aren't even worth considering as evidence to the facts of the Hollow Earth. I mean, exactly how much of the scripture is archaeological survey exactly? How much of it explains geology, etc? I'm betting it's not exactly a lot of it. Now, speaking of Jesus, after he had died on the cross... I know! What a wimp! When the Romans tried to crucify me, they all died from the extra strength whiskey that just shot out of my body that I have instead of blood when they drove the first nail into my hand. So I had to put myself up there. 
After three weeks chilling, I got bored and left. Well, I say I got bored. I ran out of blood and had to go to off license to get more. I would have gone back, but I got lost and ended up wandering around for a few hundred years. Met some guys with some cool ass boats, actually. Told them about how raiding and pillaging was bad AF. One of my favorite hobbies. Nice guys. I think they were called the Vic Ings or something. Wonder what ever happened to them. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 9, it says, Now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower part of the earth? Right, let's just for one moment accept that that is describing an actual thing that happened. Why does the lower part of the earth have to be literally a gigantic space that is under the surface? Why couldn't it just be a cave? Hell, you can get big old caves deep underground that barely scratch the surface of the Earth's crust. And let's just go figurative as all the heck. What if the lower parts of the Earth are just a reference to the surface? Surely some ancient folks would have considered the land and the sky to be part of the same thing, right? That's two ways of interpreting the passage that don't require you to end up with an idea with no friggin' evidence. Now when I looked these few words up, that didn't really give me proof of a subterranean realm. Well, no shit. Where it says lower part of the earth. Lower just simply meant lower in the Greek. Much like my IQ is getting lower. Good, good. Thank you, Burgle Snurf. Sorry, some of my IQs fell out while I was trying to speak. Earth was the word gay, G-E, and it's pronounced gay, and it meant ground, the earth as a standing place, or mainland as opposed to water, and it simply means the ground that you walk on. Why, that's some cutting edge sciencing right there. I take it back. Clearly, scripture is the best way to figure out the nature of the earth and what's inside it. They have a word for ground that you're standing on and everything. Oh, me of little faith. What a fool I hath been. So, Ephesians 4.9 did not prove of a subterranean realm. Again, shocking. I'm a little confused as to why you even bothered to include it in your little study club. Are you trying to, like, build up to an exciting climax when you reveal the amazing bunker-busting truth proof that will shock us all out of our chairs? Or was it more of an attempt at intellectual honesty by including the, uh, well, I want to say weakest evidence, but that would be, like, all of it, really. So I will go with most terrible. But I do have to give you kudos if that is what you are trying to do, even if it does ultimately fall a bit flat. Now, so I went to Philippians chapter 2, verse 10. I love that you've got that kind of ba da da dum, ba da da dum, ba da da dum excitement music in the background. Really helps to raise the excitement of you slowly reading out the names of Bible verses or whatever. You should ease back on that, otherwise my heart could burst out of my chest from all the excite. Well, you know, it could come back to do that again. I do miss my cold little dead heart. He took some whiskey with him. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of thing in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. I have the strangest feeling that that passage was probably just a teeny tiny bit more, you know, coherent and probably like flowery and poetic in its original language. That sounds like the kind of crap I would write 20 bottles in if I, for some unknown reason, was trying to be romantic to Mrs. Sick. So clearly, this is all hypothetical. But yeah, it would be something along the lines of, you're like pretty and stuff, and I like your face and stuff, and you are sometimes tolerable to be around and stuff. Real A-tier writer rising, I know. But anyway, my point is, do you think that something in this passage might just be a tiny bit lost in translation? And maybe even if it was originally accurate, don't use something that's so butchered to make judgments about reality? Perhaps? Now, the word heaven simply means heaven. And there I was thinking it meant pie. 
I mean, I do really like pie. Pie, pie, pie. Man, I want some pie. Then I would be in heaven. Like we know of, the things in the earth, the first word earth is... Usually I make fun when people leave big unedited gaps by pretending it makes it suspenseful. But with the actual suspense music, this just becomes 10 times more hilarious. Also, you can see in the background, this guy has some what looks to be video editing software open. Just cut out the dead air for crying out loud. You have the tools right with you. Uh -huh. Epigeos means existing upon the earth and it means terrestrial earth, which is the ground we walk on. See, if you had cut that out, you could have made yourself look like you were doing a big smart and everything. That was a big word, though, and I'm just going to assume you did say it properly. So have a gold star. And then when it says things under the earth, that word is katathenos, which is a Greek word that means subterranean. Right, so subterranean. Let's play a quick game of what's more likely. Again, this assumes that anything happened, which, well, I'll let you come to your own conclusions about how it didn't. But yeah, was Jesus talking about some amazing underground world that at basically no other point he's going to talk about in any way, shape or form? Like, he's never, ever going to explicitly bring it up in a, oh, by the way, my dudes, there's this complete underground world you should totally check out. It's crazy. Or was he talking about... I don't know, insects and burrowing creatures. Because I'm pretty sure in a lot of texts, there's an idea about how animals know God, etc. Because it's like innate, apparently. And even if there isn't, and I'm just a big wrong idiot, it's still way more likely that's what he actually meant. So now we're getting to a portion that means something subterranean, that where you have heaven and earth and under the earth all in one verse philippians 2 10. and whoopity doopity do for that although as i have already pointed out kinda so what really if this underground land exists and god was like real the simple fact of the matter is surely he could have given something more concrete than vaguely talking about things that may or may not be underneath him well the things that are beneath him besides making clear and accurate statements about the world or giving us tangible evidence of his existence. But again, that is so beneath him. He's like not even going to dignify that with a response. So a recap of Philippians 2.10. No, 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 no. We don't need a recap. This video is like five minutes long title. If I need a recap, I'll just rewind the video. We really don't. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven so you have heaven things in earth that's terrestrial earth and things under the earth that's subterranean earth <sighs> thanks for that and it's not a glowing endorsement of your audience that you do have to repeat the thing that you just said five seconds ago and no it doesn't count when i do it because i'm doing it because they do it it's a never-ending cycle of pain that's why i put in the bad jokes and drink the whiskey that's a lie. I would do both those things regardless because I'm terrible. There's one more verse that I would like to point out. And that's Matthew 12, 40. All right. One more. Great. Cool. I'm glad we're going to get through this. We did it, buddy. I'm mostly looking forward to your conclusion and whether I should start digging out the street in front of my house looking for undergroundy lads. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. You want to use Jonah, that thing that even the most ardent of Bible believers tend to go, yeah, well, of course, that's a parable. I mean, not the literal literist, but there's a lot of people who will say the Bible and truth. And then you point out something like Jonah and they look at you like you're the stupid one for not realizing, well, obviously, that bit's not true, you big dumb jerk. But yeah, you're going to use that bit. Good job. Now we know that Jesus is saying that he was in the heart of the earth. 
Well, if Jesus was basically God, I gotta assume that at least one of his superpowers would be the ability to swim through lava. So, sure, he could get there. I just wouldn't recommend it for anybody else to try. The word heart there is cardia. And that means in the innermost part of Right, don't you try to razzle-dazzle me with your super fancy special effects. Um, what were we talking about again? Ugh, damn it. I was razzle-dazzled by your super fancy special effects. Got distracted. Can't believe that worked. And then we have Earth. So he was in the innermost part of the Earth. Wait, what the hell? That's it? But that's not a conclusion to the Hollow Earth thing. If literally, do you think that Magic Jeebus, a man capable of miracles, couldn't go wherever the hell he wanted regardless of lava or iron content or lack thereof? And if figurative, I say if, but you know it is, then he means like the soul of the world or something. So while you're not going to give us a conclusion on whether the scriptures support a Hollow Earth, I will. No, they don't. I don't know why you would want to use them anyway. They're just gospel. It's not like they're the word of God. Guys, don't forget to panic buy sick brand merch. What if you need to let people know that you were handsome, famous and good at the sex in a variety of tasteful colours? Buy as many as you can afford now before this thing that's printed to order runs out. Also, you can use it as toilet paper if needs be. You never know when you're going to need to wipe your ass.